I just got back from AMD Tech Day, their top secret press event, where they revealed new details on their latest 9000 series desktop processors, third party benchmarks, pricing, and new X3D chips. None of these things were mentioned. But AMD did share a number of compelling slides from their presentation and just enough new information to tie us over as we move ever closer to the highly anticipated launch. Let's get into it. Hold on, Ryo need to get paid. This video is sponsored by the Drop CSTM80 mechanical keyboard. It has a many different cover with magnet. You can change very easy. This is a good idea I'm pretty sure China going to steal. You can choose the weight and the switch spray. This very custom. Make the typing feel like happy ending. It has an ABS keycap with a front-facing alphabet and some RGB. The design is simple and quiet, not noisy like American woman. The inner case is a polycarbonate material, very strong. If it breaks, that's your fault. There's a custom gasket-mounted system with a gasket peg you can replace when changing the plate. It's going to change the keyboard feel and give you big egg roll. Also, there's a hot swap PCB, pre-installed foam, polycarbonate plate, and aluminum case weight. This is a keyboard for the smart, good-looking people, so click the description link if you're not dumb and ugly. AMD's Tech Day was a well-organized event that shared a ton of information with the press, but good lord was there a heavy emphasis on AI and their latest StrixPoint mobile APUs nearly to the point of exhaustion. Although the company's AI advancements were impressive, with StrixPoint delivering over 3x gen over gen performance gains, at times I sensed a collective eagerness among my peers, like kids in a classroom waiting for the bell to ring. Eventually, though, all of our ears perked up once AMD began delving into the details of their highly anticipated 9000 series desktop CPUs, 800 series motherboards, and some additional goodies that we'll be focusing on today. To quickly recap AMD's keynote at Computex last month, we already know that the new CPUs will be built on the latest Zen 5 architecture with four new SKUs to start, the Ryzen 9 9950X, Ryzen 9 9900X, Ryzen 7 9700X, and Ryzen 5 9600X. All will feature exclusive support for DDR5 memory, farewell DDR4, and simultaneous PCIe 5 support for graphics and NVMe storage so you can utilize both at the same time once Gen 5 GPUs finally arrive. The new chips also use the current AM5 socket, which AMD plans to support until at least 2027. While we still don't have any word on pricing, AMD just confirmed that we can expect on-shelf availability come July 31st at the end of this month. It was also revealed at Computex that the Zen 5 architecture has been refined to achieve a 16% IPC uplift over Zen 4. AMD built upon this at Tech Day, stating that Zen 5 will deliver higher performance with greater efficiency as well, offering lower power usage and cooler, quieter systems. In one example, they claimed that the Ryzen 9 9950X sees a 15% improvement in thermal resistance versus the 7950X, leading to a temperature reduction of 7 degrees Celsius with both chips running at the same TDP. More impressive, I thought, were the newly released charts showing the 9000 series higher all-core performance in Blender 3D, despite three of the four SKUs having lower TDPs than their 7000 series counterparts. Only the flagship 9950X retains a 170W TDP, but the 9900X receives a 50W reduction, while the 9700X and 9600X have been reduced to 65W parts. Lower TDPs means higher ceilings for things like Precision Boost Overdrive that lead to higher performance. And if we see lower temps than last gen, the new chips could be attractive options for small form factor builds and other cooling limited systems. Now there's already been some speculation that this first round of Zen 5 SKUs will not outperform the 7000 X3D chips in gaming, a theory that AMD subtly confirmed with this slide, pitting the 9700X against a 5800X3D, most likely because the new chip isn't any match for the second gen 3D Vcash King, the 7800X3D. Having said that, the 9700X does outpace the 5800X3D in gaming by up to 12% on average, while operating at a significantly lower TDP. Although X3D SKUs for Ryzen 9000 haven't even been officially announced yet, there's a good chance they're coming, possibly to compete with Intel's 15th gen Arrow Lake CPUs that are rumored to launch in Q4 of this year. At the event, AMD presented productivity and gaming benchmarks for three of the new processors, which like all first party performance numbers, should be taken with the fat grain of salt. The 6-core Ryzen 5 9600X was tested against Intel's Core i5-14600K and saw superior performance across the board with highlights such as 94% better rendering performance in Handbrake and up to 29% more FPS in Horizon Zero Dawn. 
The 8-core 9700X went head-to-head -head with the Intel Core i7-14700K and also churned out favorable performance all around. Not too shabby when you consider that the 9600X and 9700X are running at about half the TDP of their competitors with a fair chance of staying cooler as well. The 12-core 9900X led the charts over Intel's Core i9-14900K with double-digit percentage gains in most productivity tests and titles like Cyberpunk 2077, F1 2023, and Horizon Zero Dawn. No additional benchmarks were shared for the 16-core 9950X. I'm guessing this is due to there not being a decent competitor from Intel's side. Obviously, these numbers are impressive, otherwise AMD wouldn't have shown them but I'm gonna wait until testing the chips myself before I get too excited. On top of the new processors, we got a brief look at the new 800 series chipset family. No release date was announced for these boards, though rumors point to a September launch to potentially coincide with the unannounced 9000 X3D SKUs. Perhaps the biggest feature on the new X870E and X870 motherboards is USB 4, offering up to 40 gigabits per second of bandwidth that's sure to be useful for content creators working with larger files. As mentioned, these chipsets will also provide support for Gen 5 graphics and NVMe storage at the same time. The B850 chipset is the successor to the more budget-friendly B650, offering a decent amount of features for the price. Gen 5 NVMe and Gen 4 graphics come standard, with the option for Gen 5 graphics should board makers add it to their premium models. B850 will lack USB 4 and instead feature USB 3.2 with speeds up to 20 gigabits per second. At the bottom of the list, the B840 chipset is reserved for ultra-budget systems, capping at PCIe Gen 3 and USB 3.2 up to 10 gigabits per second. Only memory overclocking will be supported, while higher tier chipsets will see full CPU and memory OC capabilities. On the topic of memory, the Ryzen 9000 series brings with it a number of DRAM enhancements, such as a GESA support for up to DDR5-8000 and a new optimized performance profile that adds an Expo 6000 speed profile for memory kits that don't already have it. This serves as a sort of peace of mind guarantee that even if your kit is unstable at its higher advertised speed with Expo 1 or 2, it will still at minimum be able to run at that 6000 speed baseline. AMD also demoed their new OTF or on-the-fly memory overclocking, which lets users easily switch between memory profiles in real time using a utility like Ryzen Master. For example, you can load slower, stable settings for mission-critical work, then instantly switch to a more aggressive profile without rebooting when it's time to game. Moreover, if you crash your system while trying to tighten up your timings, On The Fly will boot with safe JDEX settings to avoid any dreadful black screens, eliminating one of the most notorious pangs of memory overclocking. As a companion to AMD's Curve Optimizer, they'll also be adding Curve Shaper, letting you adjust a different dimension of your voltage margin at specific temperature and frequency bands for optimal performance given your workload conditions. As a fun little bonus, AMD had an LN2 overclocking demo with the Ryzen 9 9950X, where they quickly beat the Cinebench R23 all-core world record that was previously held by the 7950X running at 6.1 GHz. The 9950X was able to dethrone its predecessor at 5.85 GHz, just 250 MHz higher than the chip's max boost clock. But like any enthusiast with a tank of LN2 on their side, they didn't stop there. During my brief time in the demo room, I saw them reach clock speeds in the high sixes with a Cinebench NT score of 55,046, blowing the old record out of the water without breaking a sweat. And that about sums it up for all of the 9000 series stuff that I can talk about right now until I share my own benchmarks with you guys later this month. Feel free to drop any requests on what kind of content you guys would like to see on these new chips and what you think of them so far. That's going to do it for now, though, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, toss a like on the video before you go. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way and click that notification bell or else you'll die alone.